Welcome back. Still playing World of War here. World of War 85. Looking at uh, scenario 21. It's the Kickstarter expansion uh, bonus scenario, I guess. And it's interesting little swirling battlefield that it uh, presents to you. And one of the things that, one of the reasons why it's called Whirlwind is because things happen pretty quickly, I think. But um, <clears throat> I thought it was interesting to sort of check in here at the end of turn three or close to the end of turn three. I actually have a handful of formation cars to go, but I think we might have reached a, a breaking point for the Soviets uh, through a combination of you know, deft uh, play by the U.S. forces and some unlucky die rolling by by the Soviets, uh, but also uh, some other tactical choices that could have been made here may have made a big difference for the Soviets. And we, I'll see if we can get into that in a second. But the status of the situation, you know, you've got a lot of these red X markers on here. That means that those folks are ops complete or done for the turn, right? And I'm going to show you the list of formations that played out and then we'll kind of go from, so you can get a feel for the flow perhaps. So the Soviets started out and then a double activation for you know the third armored division. We got our CAS in, which knocked out five steps of T-80s. And then Task Force Orange got to go, which is the M1s uh, in the city, which I'll show you in a sec. Then the Soviets got to go, they tried to do some things, they shot, they missed, they shot, they missed, it, they just, or the Americans saved. Soviet CAS came in, got a disruption from AA, and uh, aborted, that sucked. Then the Scratch Force got back-to-back -back activations as well. And here's where the, the sequence of play slash the cadence uh, of play with the United States receiving Hopefully that was in focus. I didn't look at the camera. Sorry, if it wasn't, there you go. There, you can now see the things, um, formation cards. The cadence of play gives the, the U.S. a bit of an advantage. So that's the command and control aspects of the game where, <clears throat> based on doctrine, each basically each Soviet formation is going to get one activation a turn. But there is the exception that in this particular scenario, for instance, there's a concept of a designated formation, which means you can activate any one formation, uh, even if it's been activated already in the turn. So it give, does give them a second activation. And there are some elite units that get uh, second activations as well. But that being said, the tide of, of the... The uh, chip pulls here, or the, the car draws here, really fell in favor of the Americans this turn, where the first two turns it didn't. <clears throat> and the next, uh, we had this battlefield event, which was, um, it was basically a forward reserves reinforcement thing, which is not gonna make a difference. And uh, the problem that the Soviets have is because they chose to uh, deposit some infantry over here to prevent the auto victory condition over here, see, these axes here, as you, if you watch the other videos, you'll know that if the U.S. can move through all of those and control them, that they will receive an automatic victory at the end of that turn, right? So not easy to do, but it's possible. So we left a, a company of infantry over there. That cost me two recon uh, units and two uh, BMP units. Uh, in, in shots fired at, at them in anger and then the rest whoa our camera's moving and then the rest of the Soviets moved out of the water because they were all basically in the water here into the town uh, they popped smoke over here they tried to uh, come this way the smoke scattered it didn't land where we needed it probably should have just fired another one I don't know why I didn't, but it's like, yeah, I just fight one. And uh, so we tried to come through the city. I put some guys up on the edges here to do some, um, uh, you know, opportunity fire, stuff, stuff like that. <laughs> that just didn't work out very well. And then uh, the Americans brought uh, their two platoons of uh, Patton tanks down to here, trying to, you know, compress in this way and get into a situation where they could do a close assault against a BMP, uh, which would be a, uh, a very nasty experience for the, uh, for the, for the BMP. Uh, but as, as the 
turn unfolded with the back-to-back -back scratch activations, for, oh, sorry, activations for the scratch force, these guys here, who are now low ammo, they got the fire twice uh, in a row. They put disruptions on both of these units, and so now they only needed two hits on each one to knock those formations, out, those units out of that formation. That now means that 60% of the BMPs have been lost and 40% of the infantry have been lost, plus the BRDM2s, uh, these guys. So, so that's basically a spent force. It's not going to be enough. Here's what the Soviets have to do. They have to capture this hex here, this hex here, uh, this hex here, which, you know, they can do that, can do that this turn. This guy can, you know, move into here. Uh, except he can't move closer to the enemy. But if he becomes undisrupted, he can do that. Now, the other thing that the Soviets have to do in this scenario, which is not easy either uh, yet, but probably likely is they can march eight units off here, uh, vehicle units, get them off. But look where this hex is, it's an odd spot. It's actually one hex or half a hex inland, which means these guys technically, I believe, are gonna have to go one, two, three, and off. <clears throat> so I guess this would be the exit here, and then the next moving point. But what that's gonna do though, is, is it, what it does is it sets up, rather than sort of slinking out here, it does set up the set up the Soviets for a little bit of a, well, I've gotta kinda of curve around and get on the road, and that gives one, well, that's a mortar unit, one, two, three, four units, five units, the opportunity to up fire at everything that tries to get off the board there, right? And all we're gonna do is get a disruption on them, stop them from moving, and then hope to get a second activation, excuse me, with this formation. And, you know, Bob's your uncle, we can, bat, and he, you know, here's more units here that we can pound away with. So, it got to the point in this turn where I realized that I, this, this, BMP force wasn't going to be a threat. So we double moved, you know, we moved uh, the, the last two moves. We moved this infantry so we can push through the woods and they can start, they can go into the township up here and press their luck for the, for the landing, uh, for not for the landing, for the, uh, for the control of these hexes. I've got uh, Hilo over here, I hate this stand. You know, I have so many stands in this house and I am not happy with any of them. I gotta find a new stand. Uh, and I got this healer over here that can, you know, pot shot at, uh, at these infantry units. I've got the full uh, tank company here with these two infantry platoons reinforcing. We're gonna clear that out pretty quickly. Keep in mind, it's a 20 turn scenario. So I think part of the problem is tactically, we really didn't do a very good job of pacing ourselves, either as the Americans really, or as the, uh, as the, as the Soviets. We, we, we moved too fast too soon. We should have been a little more circumspect, a little more careful. And I think, you know, getting back to the point about what we could have done differently, here's what I probably will do if, I, you know, if and when I play this next, uh, would be uh, take this uh, scratch force, the, the 10, platoons of T-80s and come this way and come this way with all of the from the from the water here with the 10 BMP uh, platoons come into this city crunch in on the these hefty M1 Abrams forces this this force here is uh, basically five I think it's five or four let me just see four uh, platoons of M1s and a couple of a couple of Bradleys, I think. Yeah, there's two Bradleys and well, you know what? Yeah, it's five. So it's five platoons of M1s, the Vulcan and uh, two Bradleys. I would come in and press on that, knock that out, right? Defeat that in detail as an isolated force. It's the force that's most spread out, and as a you know. I guess a, a response to that, because the because the Americans hold pretty much the central position, and we've got these two forces spread out. Um, keep it in mind, I don't have to bring, I don't have to bring the Soviets in here. It can be anywhere on this northern sector. So I could have brought them in here, 
and push this way. But I think I like the idea of maybe splitting up the forces and coming in here with this force here, kill all these guys, and then come through here, capture the three towns. This would be the last town we capture down here, but we'll move we'll move whatever vehicles off to get our eight victory points for that, uh, or eight vehicles off for that location over there on the left here. <clears throat> and, um, and that would be a way to win. But for the Americans, because they've got this central position, if you can keep these two forces separate and or isolated uh, from each other, uh, you can then defeat them in detail, right? Pick, a, pick away at them one at a time, which we were fortunate that these two units fired very well and only on this turn in the at the end of the third turn did they go low ammo they rolled very well for their uh, ammo recovery ammo uh, retention levels uh, we had these other uh, bradleys in here that uh, took damage but uh, backed out of the fight <laughs> <coughs> after they after they did their their handy work uh up on the edges of the of the the forest here all right so what am i saying what i'm saying is it's a pretty interesting scenario number one uh the air power played an in interesting role we didn't get to the point it would have been next turn would be the earliest that the uh spetsnaz come in right uh with their uh infantry units now if we had a little bit able to land those guys look there's a, a nice little atgm unit that we could use but look there's three uh platoons that we could have placed on the board caused some trouble maybe picked up uh one of the victory locations disrupted this force here in some way shape or form and taken their eye off the heavy defense of the bill here uh anyway great scenario lots of fun Talk to you soon.